Hello, this is Maggie with Music Theory for Piano Technicians, part 30.4, why both the first and second coincident partials in a fifth matter. For this video, I'm going to be plotting the harmonic series on a keyboard with X's, and I'm gonna have two harmonic series. One will have a little bit less in harmonicity and one will have more. And you can see my purple one here is a bit plotted upwards. It's a bit stretched upwards. That one is the one that has more in harmonicity. However, for the rest of this video, the C is going to be red and the G is going to be purple. And which one has more or less in harmonicity will change depending on our context. Also for this video, you already need to know how to measure a fifth. I'll be adding that link down below if you aren't sure, along with my link for this whole series, for the whole playlist, because there's a lot of information that comes before this point. So in this graphic, our lower note of C has less inharmonicity and our upper note of G has more inharmonicity. If I tune a fifth and measure it, which you should already know, if you measure your fifth and make it pure, at the first coincident partial, then measure it again and listen to the second coincident partial. If the second coincident partial measures wide, then you'll know you have more inharmonicity in the upper note and less inharmonicity in the lower note. If I were to tune it pure at the second coincident partial, that same situation would measure narrow. I can't write an N narrow. There we are, sort of. It would measure narrow at the first coincident partial. I'm going to talk more about that in a little bit. If I have a fifth and I tune it pure at the first coincident partial, just like I did before, but I measure the second coincident partial. If that measures narrow, and because of a visual glitch here, I need to make sure everyone understands what I mean. This partial belongs to the lower note of C, this partial belongs to the upper note of G. Since the lower note partial is sharp, it means my fifth is narrow. That's how the visual works. So if I tune it pure at the first coincident partial and it measures narrow at the second coincident partial, it means my lower note has more inharmonicity and my upper note has less inharmonicity. If I were to tune it pure at the second coincident partial, this same situation would cause it to measure wide at the first coincident partial. So here's how we use this information. If we have a situation with the lower note of our fifth having less inharmonicity and the upper note of our fifth having greater inharmonicity, then we're going to want to have this second coincident partial closer to pure because this one is already narrow, the first one. If, the sec if we tune the second one definitely narrow, this one could end up too narrow and it can cause some annoying problems later on. So depending on how different they are, you're going to want to tune this just slightly narrow and close to pure or even pure if the difference is great. How great? My rule of thumb is I try to keep at least one of the measurements of the fifth not more than two beats a second narrow. So if I tune this second coincident partial pure and this one is measuring two beats a second narrow, meaning the difference between the check intervals is greater than two beats a second, then I am going to leave it right there. So then we have the opposite situation. If the lower note of the fifth has more inharmonicity, I'm going to tune the first coincident partial closer to pure because this one will definitely be narrow. And if it is extremely narrow, I'm going to want to have this first one closer to pure. If they're close together, this is not a huge issue. But when you have poorly scaled pianos or pianos with some other problems, you're going to run into this and it's very annoying. So my judge is the two beat a second rule. If I tune this first coincident partial close to pure and this one's beating narrow at two beats a second, I'm going to leave it. If this one's only beating narrow at one beat a second, I might just make sure this is just ever so slightly narrow. But somewhere in there, it's going to work. And you can check all these things to know where you are with all your other checks and tests and intervals. So you can check your running sixth, your thirds. You can use minor thirds, particularly as you go down lower. You can use an octave plus these intervals, your fifths, your fourths, everything. Use everything to determine where these notes belong, and you'll figure it out. But how do you use them? That's coming in the future. 
If you like my videos, please click the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much and happy tuning. Bye-bye.